Grab your Bibles if you haven't already. We are going to be reading 2 Samuel chapter 19, and hopefully we'll be getting through chapter 19 and chapter 20 of 2 Samuel. Joab rebukes the king. Word soon reached Joab that the king was weeping and mourning for Absalom. As all the people heard of the king's deep grief for his son, the joy of the day's victory was turned into deep sadness. They crept back into the town that day as though they were shamed and had deserted in battle. The king covered his face with his hands and kept on crying, Oh, my son Absalom! Oh, Absalom, my son, my son! Then Joab went to the king's room and said to him, We saved your life today in the lives of your sons, your daughters, and your wives and concubines. Yet you act like this, making us feel ashamed of ourselves. You seem to love those who hate you and hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that your commanders and troops mean nothing to you. It seems that if Absalom had lived and all of us had died, you would be pleased. Now go out there and congratulate your troops, for I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a single one of them will remain here tonight. Then you'll be worse off than ever before. So the king went out and took his seat at the town gate. And as the news spread throughout the town that he was there, everyone went to meet him. Meanwhile, the Israelites who had supported Absalom fled to their homes. And throughout all the tribes of Israel, there was such discussion and argument going on. The people were saying, the king rescued us from our enemies and saved us from the Philistines. But Absalom chased him out of the country. Now, Absalom, whom we anointed to rule over us is dead. Why not ask David to come back and be our king again? Then King David sent Zadok and Abathar, the priests, to say to the elders of Judah, Why are you the last ones to welcome back the king into his palace? For I have heard that all Israel is ready. You are my relatives, my own tribe, my own flesh and blood. So why are you the last ones to welcome back the king? And David told them to tell Amasa, Since you are my own flesh and blood, like Joab, may God strike me and even kill me if I do not appoint you as commander of my army in this place. Then Amasa convinced all the men of Judah, and they responded unanimously. They sent word to the king, Return to us and bring back all who are with you. So the king started back to Jerusalem, and when he arrived at the Jordan River, the people of Judah came to Gilgal to meet him and escort him across the river. Shimei, son of Gera, the man from Byurim and Benjamin, hurried across with the men of Judah to welcome King David. A thousand other men from the tribe of Benjamin were with him, including Ziba, the chief servant of the house of Saul, and Ziba's fifteen sons and twenty servants. They rushed down to the Jordan to meet the king. They crossed the shallows of the Jordan to bring the king's household across the river, helping him in every way they could. As the king was across the river, Shimei fell down before him. My lord, the king, please forgive me, he pleaded. Forget the terrible thing your servant did when you left. Jerusalem. May the king put it out of his mind. I know how much I sinned. That is why I have come here today, the very first person in all of Israel, to meet my lord the king. Then Abishai, son of Zariah, said, Shimei should die, for he cursed the lord's anointed king. Who asked your opinion, you sons of Zariah? David exclaimed. Why have you become my adversary today? This is not a day for execution for today. I am once again the king of Israel. Then, turning to Shimei, David vowed, Your life will be spared. Now Mephibosheth, Saul's grandson, came down from Jerusalem to meet the king. He had not cared for his feet, trimmed his beard, or washed his clothes since the day the king left Jerusalem. Why did you come with me, Mephibosheth? The king asked him. Mephibosheth replied, My lord, the king, my servant Ziba deceived me. I told him, Saddle my donkey so I can go with the king, for as you know, I am crippled. Ziba has slandered me by saying that I refuse to come, but I know that my lord, the king, is like an angel of God, so do what you think is best. All my relatives and I could expect only death from you, my lord, but instead you have honored me by allowing me to eat at your own table. What more can I ask? 
You've said enough, Dave replied. I've decided that you and Ziba will divide your land equally between you. Give him all of it, Mephibosheth said. I'm content just to have you safely back again, my lord the king. That's very sweet. Barzillai of Gilead had come down from Rogalim to escort the king across the Jordan. He was very old, 80 years of age, and very wealthy. He was the one who had provided food for the king during his stay in Mahanaim. Come across with me and live in Jerusalem, the king said to Barzillai. I will take care of you there. No, he replied, I am far too old to go with the king to Jerusalem. I am 80 years old today, and I can no longer enjoy anything. Food and wine are no longer tasty, and I cannot hear the singers as they sing. I would only be a burden to my lord, the king. Just to go across the Jordan River with the king is all the honor I need. Then let me return again to, my, to die in my own town, where my father and mother are buried. But here's your servant, my son, Kimham. Let him go with my lord, the king, and receive whatever you want to give him. Good, the king agreed. Kimham will go with me, and I will help him in any way you would like. And I would do for you anything that you want. So all the people crossed Jordan with the king. After David had blessed Barzillai and kissed him, Barzillai returned to his own home. The king then crossed over to Gilgal, taking Kimham with him. All the troops of Judah and half the troops of Israel escorted the king on his way. But all the men of Israel complained to the king. The men of Judah stole the king and didn't give us the honor of helping take you, your household, and all your men across the Jordan. The men of Judah replied, The king is one of our own kinsmen. Why should this make you angry? We haven't eaten any of the king's food or received any special favors. But there are ten tribes in Israel, the others replied. So we have ten times as much right to the king as you do. What right do you have to treat us with such contempt? Weren't we the first to speak of bringing him back to be our king? The argument continued back and forth, and the men of Judah spoke even more harshly than the men of Israel. Chapter 20 of 2 Samuel The Revolt of Sheba There happened to be a troublemaker there named Sheba, son of Bichri, a man from the tribe of Benjamin. Sheba blew a ram's horn and began to chant. Down with the dynasty of David. We have no interest in the son of Jesse. Come on, you men of Israel, back to your homes. So all the men of Israel deserted David and followed Sheba, son of Bichri. But the men of Judah stayed with their king and escorted him from the Jordan River to Jerusalem. When David came to his palace in Jerusalem, he took his ten concubines that he had left to look after the palace and placed them in seclusion. Their needs were provided for, but he, but he no longer slept with them. So each of them lived like a widow until she died. That is sad. I think that's very sad. At least he provided for them, but it's still sad. Then the king told Amasa, Mobilize the army of Judah within three days and report back at the time. So Amasa went out to notify Judah, but it took him longer than the time he had been given. Then David said to Abishai, Sheba, son of Bichri, is going to hurt us more than Absalom did. Quick, take my troops and chase after him before he gets into a fortified town where he, we can't reach him. Then David said to Abishai, Sheba, son of Bichri, is going to hurt us more. Quick, take my troops and chase after him before he gets into a fortified town where we can't reach him. So Abishai and Joab, together with the king's bodyguard and all the mighty warriors, set out from Jerusalem to go after Sheba. As they arrived at the great stone in Gibeon, Amasa met them. Joab was wearing his military tunic with a dagger strapped to his belt. As he stepped forward to greet Amasa, he slipped the dagger from its sheath. How are you, my cousin? Oh, Joab said and took him by the beard with his right hand as though to kiss him. Amasa didn't notice the dagger in his left hand, and Joab stabbed him in the stomach with it so that his insides gushed out on the ground. Joab did not need to strike again, and Amasa soon died. Joab and his brother Abishai left him lying there and continued after Sheba. One of Joab's young men shouted to Amasa's troops, If you are for Joab and David, come and follow Joab. But Amasa lay in his blood in the middle of the road, and Joab's man saw that everyone was stopping to stare at him. So he pulled him off the road into a field and threw a cloak over him. With Amasa's body out of the way, everyone went on with Joab to secure Sheba, son of Bichri. Meanwhile, 
Sheba traveled through all the tribes of Israel and eventually came to the town of Abel Beth Makkah. All the members of his own clan, the Bichrites, assembled for battle and followed him into the town. When Joab's forces arrived, they attacked Abel Beth Makkah. <laughs> they built a siege ramp against the town's fortifications and began battering down the wall. But a wise woman in the town called out to Joab. Listen to me, Joab. Come over here so I can talk to you. As he approached, the woman said, Are you Joab? I am, he replied. So she said, Listen carefully to your servant. I'm listening, he said. Then she continued, There used to be a saying, If you want to settle an argument, ask advice at the town of Abel. I am one who is peace-loving and faithful in Israel, but you are destroying an important town in Israel. Why do you want to devour what belongs to the Lord? And Joab replied, Believe me, I don't want to devour or destroy your town. That's not my purpose. All I want is a man named Sheba, son of Bichri, from the hill country of Ephraim, who has revolted, revolted against King David. If you hand over this one man to me, I will leave the town in peace. All right, the woman replied, we will throw his head over the wall to you. Then the woman went to all the people with her wise advice, and they cut off Sheba's head and threw it out to Joab. So he blew the ram's horn and called his troops back from the attack. They all returned to their homes, and Joab returned to the king of Jerusalem. Now Joab was the commander of the army of Israel. Benai, son of Je Jehoiah, was captain of the king's bodyguard. Adonir Adoniram was in charge of forced labor. Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, was a royal historian. Sheba was the court secretary. Zadok and Abathir were the priests. And Ira, a descendant of Jair, was David's personal priest. So we'll be reading chapter 21 next. The later years of David's rules. And David avenges the Gibeonites. And I got a new Bible as a gift this weekend. So I might read out of it. It's a different version. I think it's the ESV. And I'm reading right now the NLT. But just because I have a new Bible, I might read at least a couple chapters out of it. If that's okay by you guys, we'll at least give it a shot. Feel free to give me any feedback. If you don't like it, I'm switching it up mid-reading. So I probably won't stick with it. I'll probably stick with this. But because I have a new Bible, I just want to read out of it a little bit. And I'm going to end in prayer. Thank you so much for being here. And to my understanding, if you like and subscribe, it does help spread the word of God to others. If people don't like and subscribe, they're more likely to not continue to share the word with other people. So if you want to get out the word of God, then please like and subscribe if you wish. Recommend to other people. We'd love to have people joining us in fellowship and reading the word of God and praying for one another, uplifting one another. Uh, so thank you for being here. Father God, we come to you uh, humbly, and now it is the Christmas season, and I know that not everybody celebrates Christmas, but it is definitely a time to just be jolly and full of love and grace and kindness, and it's so fantastic to just be full, 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 full of the Holy Spirit and uh, full of the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Help us to abound in service, to put others first, to love like you call us to love, to live in a way that brings you glory and praise. Help us to live in a way that serves your kingdom, your purpose, your will. Help us to know your will for our lives and to truly care for one another, not because of where we're from or the color of our skin or where we work or what we do or any of that, because those titles do not matter at the end of the day. What matters is glorifying you, God, and, and knowing your purpose for us. I think ultimately our purpose is to bring you glory so help us do so help us to have peace and wisdom and direction in our lives god and for those of us who feel alone fill fill us with your holy spirit god give us your presence and it's in jesus name i pray amen and i'm really glad you're here i hope to see you with second samuel chapter 21